cool. <laughs> Thanks again, Ken. Yeah. Glad you stopped. <laughs> Betty! Hi! What a pleasure seeing you. So glad to oh, have you. It's a pleasure. Now, of course, Betty, I know because I've uh, gone to your business many, many times, <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of our viewers have. But tell the folks what you and your husband do. Well, we own a towing and auto repair business. We repair like batteries, struts, shocks, oil changes. We tow people off the interstate. We tow people in town. If you have any issue with your car, give Betty a call. That's all I That's know. Right. Give Betty give a, me a call. call. Now, share with the folks, Betty, how long have you and Richard been in business? We've been in business for 35 years. Thir Congratulations. I know and it's a long time. And how, <laughs> and how did it all begin? Well, my husband came home one day and said that where he was working was either closing or we had to buy the business. Of course, you know me, the first thing you do is ball. Well, I didn't ball too long. But we went to the bank to see if we could get some money. He said, well, you got to go to Fairmont because that's where you're going to be. So we go to Fairmont. Nobody in Fairmont would give us any money. Believe it or not, back, back in 84, all we wanted was $5,000. Wow. So we go back to People State and Truman, and a guy by the name of Jerry Tiggs, you know, said, I'll give you the money. And I said, I don't want my dad's name on nothing because we didn't want him liable for sure. anything. So he said, oh, well, I'll co-sign for you. And that's how it started. Wow. And he stood behind us. The sad thing is that six months later, our business burnt down. Burnt down? Yeah. Don six DeBorf. months into your... Six months oh, into this wow. business, it burnt down. On December 13th, did Friday that, the 13th. Oh, did that require on your part more crying then? Yeah, lots. <laughs> Christmas tree sat in the middle of the living room, never got oh, it. No. But Don DeBoer, DeBoer Motors, said, you can use our two garages in the back till you find somewhere to go. Well, that was nice. And then we bought Clarence Zink's building down on Park and Blue Earth. And we were there for 13 years. And we kind of got to chummy with this attorney. You know, he came in every day. Mr. Schaefer, and he sent some people down. He says, they want you to buy their building. And I said, there's no way in beep. We are going to do that. Because I said, we can't afford it. That's too big a building. And he goes, yes, you can. And I said, well, let us think about it. So then we just kind of dropped it. Pretty soon he come back. He says, you sign in the papers? <laughs> and my heart sank. And he goes, the Salvation Army's buying your building, and you're buying the Goodyear building. And it just fell into place like wow. it was meant to be. And what year was it that you made that move from the first location or that location to? It was your probably ninety-seven, now? maybe two. Th we owned the business three years before Goodyear got out, so it was probably we bought it in ninety-seven, and I believe we moved out in two thousand, right around there. 2000. So around two thousands when you we moved, moved up to move to the, the Goodyear location yep. that you're at mm -hmm. now. So you've been there for almost twenty years. <sighs> Holy cow, does time I'm too old. pass. We are, we are too <laughs> old. We are too old. So now, Betty, tell the folks a little bit about, I know, I know your kids and stuff, uh, about the, your family. I got a son named Dustin who owns Wiederhof Welding. And I got a daughter named Jessica who helps him as his secretary or right-hand man or whatever you call her. Sure. And they're do, both doing well. So I remember good. when they were little. Yep. And you were at the old location. They both stayed with us the they whole time. There. They were in playpens when we burnt down Dustin's crib and everything was lost in the fire. But we got another one. And when we moved down here, we put, instead of a crib, we had, I don't know what you call them, playpens. And sure. they could nap in there. And Dustin napped on the recliner and Jessica slept in the playpen. Well, that's really, they were there the all whole the time. time. That's so cool. Right with the family. And talking about the old location, uh, I found some footage of Richard talking about uh, going out picking up cars in the snow banks and all that kind of stuff. And I have that footage. Would you like to see sure. it? Sure. Let's take a look. Well, that's the sound that we hope to hear coming from our vehicles on those bone chilling mornings this time of year. I think most of us have gone through the frustration of a vehicle that either would not start for us on those early mornings or maybe we were left out stranded in the middle of nowhere. Who do we look to for help in those situations? Of course, our local tow truck operators. Richard's Towing and Repair is one operation in the Fairmont who answers those calls of help from us. Richard and Betty Wiederhoff have owned and operated their business for 15 years, not all in the same location, however, according to Richard. Started out at Poppy's 
in the back part of there and for about a year and then we went to used to be the old co-op building on State Street and was there six months and that burned down and then in December on Friday the 13th was when the fire was we moved here in January after being out of business for a month bought this and been here ever since Richard and Betty employ mechanics Ron Slater and Don Howard, along with Cade Lear, who is a mechanic and tow truck operator, and Herbie Widmus, who runs the wrecker part-time. Battery problems lead to the most common failures in vehicles that come into the shop this time of year, according to Richard. The last two winters, it's been too nice, too long, and then when it does get cold, it hits right now, and nobody's going to spend money on anything unless they have to, and that's the battery is the key thing on a new car is for fuel injection. If they don't spin fast enough right away from the beginning, they'll flood out and and then you end up towing them or trying to get them jumped. Operating a wrecker can sometimes be a dangerous occupation. Been a couple close calls while I'm out towing in the wintertime. People almost slide into you. Their, their biggest thing, they got to look at the red lights and, and gawk at what they're not supposed to be gawking at and run into you. In the summertime, I almost had a lady run into me while I was changing a flat tire on the interstate wasn't paying attention and one time I was sitting alongside the interstate pulling a car out of the ditch and I had a semi sideswipe me. Uh, other than that, nothing, nothing ever been any closer than that. That day I thought I was gone when I seen that semi coming closer and closer. The operation is very much a family business that Richard and Betty share with their son, 13-year-old Dustin, and their daughter, 6-year-old Jessica. Customers have come to expect seeing one or both of them at the shop whenever they aren't in school, according to Richard. They've been here Richard. since the third week, both of them, since the third week of birth, they've been down here running, we're laying in the shop, and you can ask many of our customers that they laid in the playpen in the cribs when they were little, and now they are up and running around and going to school, so... Uh, they're involved in the family or in the family business just as much as we are, you know, and everybody knows them as part of the family business. So, so the next time you're contemplating driving on the open roadways in the next blizzard or in sub-zero wind chill nights, Richard offers this advice. Stay home. <laughs> Not go out and adventure and see what, how bad it really is. The best would be to stay home and, or stay off the road and see what uh, things are like. For Hometown Focus, I'm Jeff Hagen reporting. Now that was awesome. How about that, Richard? I know, he was a handsome man well, back then. Still is. But I work him to death. He'll tell you that. <laughs> well, that was really fun to yeah, see. Yeah, it was. And uh, uh, tell Richard that we're going to have to have him on the show one of these days soon, too. Oh, great. <laughs> you can. Okay. Now, Betty, share with us a little more detail of what services uh, you offer at uh, your business. Well, on the towing side, we have AAA, which... Is a roadside, but we do insurance tows. We either tow them to the dealership, or we're, it's your choice where you want it towed to. We don't tell people, no, you have to come back to us, because okay. we decide that right from the beginning. We want people to make their own choice. Exactly. And we do like tire repairs. We sell tires. We sell batteries. We do oil changes. When we do oil changes, we vacuum them inside and out, and we wash the windows. We pick up and delivery, and there's no charge. Sure. Pretty much full service. Yeah, I mean, there's, really. There's we don't much. do major stuff. Like, we don't do engines and transmissions because okay. we don't have any free base to hold anything up. We try to get... I really stress that nothing stays in our place longer than two days. Well, and, and uh, when you go there, you, you have a lot of vehicles and a lot of employees. How many employees do you have? Well, there's eight of us that eat dinner every day okay. because I cook. I cook them dinner every day. So it's family. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I hope they feel we're family because that's the way I wanted to be treated when I worked. So sure. that's the way I want them to be treated. Well, and you know, you're busy down there and everything seems to go very smooth with yes. getting people in and out. But I do wonder when I go there sometimes, how in the world you were able to make this happen in that small location that you had down the street? That's because we had one extra garage that we called outside God's garage. That and that's what we always did. And with the help of the banker, and then that was another thing. We had to go get a loan to move up there. So then where do you go, you know? Sure. This guy loaned me five grand back in 84. So we are now banking, not that I should put a plug in, at State Bank. And I would advise any young person coming to town to get a loan to go talk to Al Struck. At State Bank. That's awesome. Because he helped my son get 
started in his business. He was very good to him. And I encourage, and I don't know why I'm talking about this, but I just feel that we need more younger people in business nowadays. And even if you have a pipe dream, he'll tell you, he'll help you through it. And he'll explain if you if it ain't feasible, he'll tell you. Well, and uh, kind of like you were saying, what you want is you want someone to see the potential and yep. still share with and you stand the truth. Behind you. And sometimes you discover, no, this isn't a good idea. You know, uh, Betty, I was going to share with you too that we, you're the tenth business here in town that's been on Martin County on television, mm -hmm. and and of the ten businesses that have been on, nine of them have been in business in this community for 35 years or longer. I think that's pretty cool. Now yours... You know, we are 35 from the very rock bottom. Nobody... And you and Richard yeah. have been there 35 years. So that's even more impressive. But it's good. But I think then we have more... If somebody comes in, you kind of like get more personal with oh, them. Sure. They're kind of more like family. Absolutely. Oh man, when a grandma leaves us, well, I just cry because I think it's just like a grandma to me because I've picked up of her car and we you get know, to know her family. You know her family. Yeah. You know, you know the history of her car and her yeah, family. That's Absolutely. right. So. Well, Betty, it's been great having you on the show. Nice seeing you as always. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. for stopping by, and uh, we're going to talk to that Richard. We might get him on here one of these well, days. Well, good too. luck. <laughs> Now, that was a great episode. It was. Absolutely. Yeah. Sarah, I want to thank you for stopping by. And as we share with the folks, the sponsors that made this show possible, remember, it's not just the past, but the present that tells our story.